pass on to our next spokesperson. For more information, I want to just take a few seconds of your time to say a big thank you and to tell you how glad we are you have joined our online service. I hope we do not annoy you by asking you to subscribe to this channel. If not, click on that subscribe button. If it annoys you to subscribe, let us know why in the comment section in a user-friendly manner. With that said, I will let you enjoy the presence of God and stay blessed. Welcome to our online YouTube church channel. We'll be bringing to you our online service in a moment, but in the meantime, we would like to find out if our sermons have been a blessing to you. If the answer is yes, please subscribe, leave a comment and a like if the messages have blessed you. In addition to that, we have some exciting news. There are a number of inspirational books written by our lead pastor, Victor E. Takumbi. One, The Believer's Compliment. Two, The Believer's Treatise Starter, Pace Setter and Finisher Edition. Three, Can You Still See the Prize? Four, Praying with the Scriptures. Five, Learning to Trust Jesus Christ Through It All. Six, the mystery of the brazen serpent, and seven, activating God's mantle across generations. Check them out from the following bookstores, amazon.com, lulu.com, bocus.com, and at libris.com. We also have inspiring and spirit-filled songs produced by our lead pastor and choir. You can download them on Spotify, Google Music, iTunes, and other music platforms. Feel free to our YouTube music channel at Sir Victor TM Official. God bless you. Please stay tuned.
praise God now. Hallelujah. Amen. It is the God of miracle. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Yahweh, God of miracle. Amen. Lay your hands upon my head. Let your people see a miracle. And praise your holy
Yeah. 
The Lord help somebody to catch up despite the times. I am praying for someone here tonight. You have been going through trials and tribulations. But no matter what you're going through, it's going to pass by. May your spirit come and continue to move with us. As you have started with us from the beginning up till now. Come and glorify yourself in our midst. Speak to us again that word that the Bible says in their distress we cried unto you and you sent your word. Your word healed us. We believe it will be a portion again in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Happy Sunday. Are we tired? <laughs> we are not tired, right? Amen. The Lord is our strength in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Father, we are grateful. We are continuing on our topic on spiritual bodmas. And tonight we are on part four of it. We are on part four. We welcome our viewers online watching us wherever you are watching from different parts of the world. We are glad you could make it tonight again. We encourage you not to forget to subscribe, to share also, and to click on that like button as well. As you do that, we believe that you will impact others way in the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 
So we are on part four, like I said, of our spiritual board mass. And today we are on the letter D. We have looked at B, we have looked at O, we are on D. And D is for division. So we want to look on when God divides. When God divides. When God divides. When God is the one that divides. And why does he divide? It is important for us to understand that as well. Thank you all who took the time to wish me happy Father's Day. The Lord bless you almightily in Jesus' name. Amen. So, like I said, we are on our part four of our Born Mass series. And I will begin sharing with us some secrets also that will help us to understand this even more in Jesus' name. Um, I understand that many of us believers think that God does not like division. I think that is our disposition. Yes, that is partly true. God does not like division. But when we say that God does not like division, God does not like division of what he has joined together. It is only what God has joined together that he does not like that he should divide. In other words, God's position about the division is this. Everything that needs to be divided should be divided. And everything that needs to stay together should stay together. I repeat, in other words, God's disposition or God's thought about it is that everything that needs to be divided should be divided. But everything that needs to stay together should stay together. It is for this reason that when God began the work of creation, he began by dividing first. He divided light from darkness. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1 to 4. The Bible says... Genesis 1 verse 1 to 4. Yeah, thank you. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning, he created the heavens and the earth. Yeah? And the earth was without form the and void. The earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face and of the darkness deep. was hovering over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, was moving over the surface of the waters. And God said, let there be light. When God said, let there be light, that was the first act of division. And there was light. And there was light. And God saw the light. And God saw light. That it was good. And he saw that light was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And he divided light from darkness. God was the first one to divide because he saw that it was necessary that light be divided from darkness. And when light was divided from darkness, he saw that light was good. And if you read on still in Genesis, you will see that he made sure that the light will rule over the day and the darkness will rule over the night. So God was the first person who divided. He divided light from darkness. So, as I said, when God is... When we are saying God does not like division, we are saying that we should not divide what God has put together. The, what he has not put together should be divided, and what uh, he has put together should not be. So, but for us believers, this becomes a little bit tricky, because it is not easy for us to know what is meant to be divided and what is meant to stay together. That becomes the tricky thing 
that you and I have to go through life facing. We need to know what should I divide? What should I keep together in my life? In other words, it means we need to learn to choose rightly. Because when it comes to the act of division, it means that it is a place of choices. He says, I've said before you life and death, but I advise you, I counsel you to choose life that you may live. It means that life and death are divided. They cannot move together. But our difficulty now is for us to divide the things that are darkness, shift it away from our lives, and to stay on course with the things that are life, that are beneficial for us. Let me begin to show us how tricky it is. Let's look at Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 4. This is Abraham, and God is speaking to him prophetically. God is giving him a prophetic word. And God said, Now the Lord had said unto Ab Ab Abraham, Yes? Get thee out of thy country. He says, Go out of your country. Country. It is a prophetic word given to Abraham. Leave your country. And from thy kindred. And from your kindred. And from thy father's house. And from your father's house. Unto a land that I will show unto you. Unto a you. place that I will show you. This is God speaking, directing Abraham to leave, go out of his father's house to a new land. But yet, uh, verse 2, and I will make of thee a great nation. And he says that in addition to this, I will make you a great nation. And I will bless you. I will bless you. And make thy name great. I will make your name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And you will be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee. I will bless them that bless you. And curse the, him that curse you. I curse you. you them that curse you. Go and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. In you shall everyone be blessed. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken Abraham unto him. Abraham departed now as the Lord had spoken prophetically. But yet there is a problem. And Lord went with him. The Lord also went with him. And Abraham was 70 and 5 years and old. Abraham was 75 years when he departed out of Hera. Amen. You see, Lord, God speaks to Abraham that leave your father's house, depart from it, and go to the land that I will show you. And God does not tell him exactly the land, but says depart, and I will show you the land as you depart. On the course of the journey of departure, the Bible says instead of Abraham going alone, Abraham decided to go with Lot. Because it is a tricky thing. That is why I say to know what to choose and to know what to not choose is a problem that we all face in our daily lives. Because God has given him a word. But should he go alone and leave his uh, nephew or should he <laughs> move with his nephew? As a father, with a father-like heart, he thinks that it is not good for him to go without his nephew. The one he had raised up in his house. So he decided to go with Lot. But because <laughs> God is not sentimental and emotional, there must be a reason to still divide that which is not supposed to be there. Now, in Genesis chapter 13, verse 5 to 15, we'll see why God did not want Lord to be there. Genesis chapter 13, verse 5 to 15. And Lord also, which went with Abram, yes. had flocks and heads and tents. Mm -hmm. And the land was not able to bear them. Now they got to a point in time, the land was not able to contain them. <laughs> they were not able to live together. Because all of them have been blessed. You see, now, the problem is not when there is no blessing. The problem comes now where there is blessing. You didn't hear what I said. Oh, yeah, you saw. In life, the problem is not when you are not blessed. Mm -hmm. The problem becomes with your entourage when blessing comes. Mm -hmm. If you will still be able to hold yourselves together. 
And now, yes, that they might dwell together for their substance was great. <laughs> so that they could not dwell together. It became difficult. And there was a strife between the heads, the headmen of Ab Abraham's cattle and the headmen of Lot's cattle. Now the people who were like servants taking care of the world <laughs> began to argue among themselves, Lot's own and Abraham's own. And the Canaanites and the Perizzites mm -hmm. dwell then in the land. Exactly. And Abraham said unto Lord, Let there be no strife, I pray thee. Abraham saw that as a father-like person, he cannot be arguing with his nephew. Mm -hmm. He cannot allow that it should continue this way. So he decided to tell them to... Between me and thee, and between my headsmen and thy headsmen. Exactly. For we be brethren. He decides to tell them that we should separate. It's not, that's nine. It's yeah. not the whole land before thee. Separate thyself, I pray thee, from mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. It's a bit tricky. The text is small, but yeah. she's trying. No, no. Now, at this point in time, Abraham tells Lord that if you will choose left, I will choose guide. If you choose north, I choose south. No matter where you choose, I don't want the strife to continue between your headsmen and mine. They themselves personally did not have an issue. But now, I began, as I read on the scripture, the Spirit of God begins to enlighten me as to why God did not want Lord to journey with Abraham in the first place. You see this now that as Abraham told Lord to choose, Lord did something. And Lord lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, uh -huh. that it was well watered he, everywhere. He lifted up his eyes and behold that the plain of Jordan was well watered. Uh -huh. Before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Before now the Lord destroyed that place called Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> Even as the garden of the Lord. Even as he destroyed the garden of Eden. Now it tells us information that the, the garden of Eden did not stay. God destroyed it so that there should be no trace of it. That's why we are not able to find any trace of Eden. <laughs> yeah, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zohar. Mm -hmm. Then Lord chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lord journeyed east, and they separated themselves as the one from the other. Abraham dwelled in the land of Canaan. It, just one minute. You see, we are on, we are on verse 12. Yeah. Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lord dwelt in the cities of the plain, and pitch his tent towards Sodom. Just wait a minute there. You see, I want to explain something about Lot. If you and I are on a journey, I am your father and you are my nephew, and I've raised you up all through life, and we get to a point in time we are blessed, and I see that we are having arguments because of the blessings. And I decide that you should choose whichever side you choose. I think that in first place, as a child I've raised, you would have said, Father, you should choose. You have done so much for me that I appreciate it. It is better I take the less for what you have done for me. The Lord did not consider that. Even though he is a man of God, I, uh, you see, he was a righteous man. God knew that, but there was something God needed to work in the life of Lot. And that is why God had to destroy that land he chose. Because if he, had, did, not, if he did not have that weakness, he wouldn't have chose that land. And the calamity that would have come would not have affected him. Are we understanding how the events are unfolding. If he did not make that choice of choosing that path, 
thinking it looks so good and plain and nice and well watered, he would not have later on faced the problem of losing his wife, becoming a pillar of salt. And the abomination that happened between him and his daughters, <laughs> that the Moabites and the Ammonites were descendants from that affair. <laughs> One event began to produce others. That is why making the right choice is tricky. But God wanted to walk with Lord's character. And that is why if Lord will continue to be with Abraham, Abraham will not achieve the promise of God. So God did that to divide them. Are you with me? That is why God will decide to remove some people in your life sometimes. It may bother you, but those people may not have the character necessary for the place that God is taking you to. They may not have the mind to really support you to where you are going. You know in the journey of God in life, as we are understanding spiritual boldness, there are people who are in life or with you for the same purpose. They are not with you because they want to be with you or they like what you are doing or like you. They are with you because what you have or the journey you are in, they too have to journey that same journey. Amen. So they are with you just to achieve what they want to achieve for the time and when they have achieved it, they will leave you. There is another group of people who are there just for a season. They are there just for a moment, just to help you for a time. <laughs> they can be there when the going is good. But when the going is bad, they can leave you. Those are the people for a season. God can still divide. Mm -hmm. They are also the group of people which will be with you so that you can fight a common enemy. But they are not with you. <laughs> they are just with you because you people have a common enemy. help us, Lord. <laughs> and when you have defeated that enemy, they will also leave you. But there are people who are there, who love you for who you are, and not for what you can give them. That is why Jesus wanted the people who loved him for who he was and not the bread that he could give, not the miracles that he could give. That is why at one point in time, he made the statement that separated the multitude from the disciples. And he asked them, why will you not go away from me as the others? And they said, where shall we go? For you have the words of life. When you have people in life that are with you, no matter your ups and downs, they are not many. Thank God for them. Amen. Because the word was preached, and great was the company of them that published it. Those are the people that will publish you and can lift you up to the high place. Ayah. Eko parada. This is truth. <laughs> it is truth in life. Whether we like it or not, it is what you face. But thank God if you could have them, that will be there. We have lost sin here, sorry. Thank God for those that will be there, no matter the rain, no matter the sun, no matter autumn, no matter winter, no matter summer, they will be there with you till the end. Thank God for such people. Amen. Because those people will sound the trumpet of the gift that God has placed in your life. Amen. They will sound the trumpet that this man is a blessing to us. Amen. This woman is a blessing to us. Amen. Therefore, we are publishing this thing because if you get it, you will be blessed. Amen. No man started life, no great man started life in greatness. Mm. That made him great was the people around him that published his greatness. But when you have the people who 
who cannot publish your greatness. You can be great, but you may small. Ah, uh, Lord, help us. Lord, help us. Every great thing started with two or three. But those two or three so believed in what the man carried. And great was the company of them that published it. Amen. They published it. They made it on global news. They did all they could do so that others should get that news. And when others got it, they said also, let us follow. You know, it was not Peter who found Jesus first. <laughs> he never found Jesus first. It was his brother, Andrew. But when his brother found Andrew, when his brother found Jesus, sorry, he went back to Peter and said, I have found the Messiah. Come and let us join him. But what do we see later on? Peter became the one who was the rock upon whom the Lord will build his church. Amen. But yet there was never a day Andrew was jealous of Peter. Amen. Amen. He brought him. But if he had not done that step, what do you think could have happened? Because events would have unfolded. Thank God for Andrew who had that heart. That is why I pray today. May the Lord help us to locate the real people who have the heart for us in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Woman, help us. Where were we? Okay. But the men of Sodom were wicked. Mm. And seen us before the Lord exceedingly. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Abraham, yeah? After that Lord was separated from him, lift up now thine eyes. After that he had divided Lord from him. He says now lift up your eyes. And look from the place where you thou art. You may be crying okay. about what has left you. Amen. But that thing that has left you is needed to leave you for you to see your greatness. Amen. Aya. But many times we worry about that because we 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 are weak, and that's why it's the that's the tricky thing in life to decide to know and to know which one to leave when it has to leave, and which one has to stay when it has to stay. All you need to do is to do all in your power to keep that which has to stay, yeah. but that which has to leave must leave. Yeah. Aya. So he was crying, but not knowing that it was better. It was the blessing coming. Amen. They have to go so that you should be blessed. Amen. I pray everything that is not necessary for our lives, may it live in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, thank you. you and, we are where? And, not where? and look from the place where thou art not where? He says, look, not words. And southward, southward, and eastward, eastward, and westward. In other words, you are not looking on one direction. <laughs> it is not one directional. Oh, if you look this way, you will be blessed. But it's a turn around blessing, yes. roundabout blessing. Amen. Oh. <laughs> When you turn around, you'll be blessed on the north. Amen. You turn around, you'll be blessed in the south. Amen. You turn around, you'll be blessed in the west. Amen. You turn around, you'll be blessed in the east. Amen. On every direction your eyes can see, I will give it to you. Amen. That is what God told him. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I pray that become our portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, one day, Dickie Nixon prayed the prayer while we were in intercession. And as we were interceding, he gave a prayer topic. He said, don't only pray that your destiny help us to, should locate you, but also pray that you should locate those people you have to be a destiny helper to. Amen. Because many times we pray, and say, Father, send me only my destiny helpers. But the people that we have to be destiny helpers to them, we don't want to go to that part. We don't want to take that responsibility. But for you to be blessed, 
you must bless others. Yes. Ah, people may use you in blessing, but there's one principle in God if you hold on to faith. He said, do not be weary of well-doing. For in due time you shall reap if you do not faint. Yes. The only problem is that the due time has not come. <laughs> that is what is disturbing you. But when it comes, it will be double for trouble. Amen. You didn't hear what I said? It will be double for trouble. Amen. All you need to do is to be patient. He said, be patient, be patient with it. That time will come where he will give you beyond measure. Beyond that which you had been hoping even to ask. Because he said, I will do exceedingly abundantly. Above all that which you ask or think or even imagine. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. That be the portion for you and I in Jesus name. Amen. That be the portion for you and I in Jesus name. Amen. So God needed to separate Lord. Because Lot was hindering Abraham from entering into the blessings of God. And from hearing the God, the voice of God effectively. So, I want to take us to the second thing that God divides for him to take us to the next level. The second thing he divides in ourselves is what will cause us to be his mouthpiece he wants us to be his mouthpiece so a second thing there are many but i've just put them in a few points the second thing he will divide in us is those things that stop us in other words from being his mouthpiece and we will look at jeremiah chapter 15 verse 19 to 21 on that Therefore, thus said the Lord. Therefore, this is the word of God. If thou return, if you will return, then will I bring thee again. I will bring you again. And thou shalt stand before me. And you will stand before me. And if thou take forth the precious from the vile, if you will separate the precious thing from the vile or the unclean, vile means unclean. If you separate the precious from the unclean, Thou shalt be as my mouth. You will be as my mouth. Let them return unto thee. Let them return unto thee. But return not thou unto but them. don't return to them. And I will make thee unto these people. I will make you unto these people. A fence, brazen, a fence, brazen a, wall. A fence, brazen wall. And they shall fight against thee. They will fight against you. <laughs> but they shall not prevail against thee. They shall not prevail. You, you know when you when you are reading this in the book of Jeremiah. <laughs> It's telling you already what will come. <laughs> but God is already telling you how it will play out. He said, do not return to them. But that they should return to you. But before that will happen, I want you to be my mouthpiece. But for you to be my mouthpiece, you must separate the precious and the vile. You must separate the precious and the unclean. That is the problem we have. When you are able to do it, then you will be as my mouth. What you speak will begin to have effect. What you speak will begin to have power. What you speak will begin to have value. Even if they don't hear. But with time, they must hear that word. Yes. You know, uh, as I was going through the journey into the prophetic, I did not understand Jeremiah very well. So there were points and disposition during my days, early days, that I began to ask God a lot of questions. And he said to me, go study the book of Jeremiah. All, there are 52 chapters. <laughs> I cannot forget it because it was an intense study of that to understand very well. And you understand that all through Jeremiah was prophesying and saying the people did not listen. <laughs> it was a few people that paid attention. What happened? It took them to captivity in Babylon. When they were in Babylon now, they still did not understand it was Daniel. <laughs> 
who understood the number of years of the captivity spoken and written by Jeremiah. Amen. Then he began to pray that the Lord should have mercy on them for the fulfillment of that word. Amen. That is why God was telling Jeremiah all this because he knew that his ministry is a ministry of battles. That what he will be declaring sometimes will be hard for the ears to contain. And there will be a lot of fight. But he said, don't return to them. Let them return to you. I will make you a bracing wall. <laughs> they will fight against you. He's telling you there, there will be fights. But they will not be able to prevail. For I am with thee to... To save thee and to deliver thee, uh -huh. save the Lord. Yeah. And I will deliver thee out of the hand of the, the wicked, wicked, and I will redeem thee out, out of, of the, the hand, hand of, of the, the wicked. But the same Jeremiah, having got this promise, if you enter chapter 20, Jeremiah was beaten by Pashu <laughs> and locked up in the jail cell. But that was done by God to preserve Jeremiah not to be carried away in captivity. Because God has said Jeremiah will remain in the land even when the people are carried captive. That is why God told Jeremiah to buy a lamb. <laughs> even when people had to be carried captive, but Jeremiah had to believe it and sign a deal for a lamb. That he will not go out of the land. He will stay there. But how will God use it? God will cause Pashu to lock him up in the stock. <laughs> and when they came to arrest people, Nebuchadnezzar and his crew, they could not find Jeremiah. So they carried the others away. But in that, because Jeremiah also, as we are men, did not see the hard whole picture, he began to cry to God and say, you have deceived me. <laughs> this is not what you, you told me. You told me in chapter 1 how you will be with me. I should not be afraid of their faces. You told me in chapter 15 how you will preserve me. But what I am seeing does not match my experience. What is happening? Child of God, you may be crying about certain things. But I want to tell you, God can be walking in the midst of it all. The only thing stay on course with God. In that Jeremiah 29, uh, 20 verse, uh, 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 chapter 20, verse 9, Jeremiah began to make mention. Let's just give that uh, uh, for the sake of reference. I want to help us. I don't know why the Lord branched me there today. It's not part of the message. But let's just branch a little. On that juncture, Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 6 to uh, 9, or verse 10. And thou, Pasho, and you see, that is Pasho, <laughs> and all that dwell in thine house shall go into captivity. He has prophesied what will happen. <laughs> and thou shalt come to Babylon. <laughs> And there thou shalt die. You know, everyone wants to hear good news. When you hear a prophet speaking of this caliber, <laughs> you say, God forbid. But what the prophet has seen will be. <laughs> and, and shall be buried. Mm -hmm. There thou and all thy friends, to whom thou hast prophesied to lies. Whom you have been prophesying lies. You have been thinking you are hearing him. <laughs> And saying things that God did not say. You and your companions will be in captivity. But now he goes on to say now to God. He has prophesied to Pashu. But he speaks now to God. Oh Lord, thou hast deceived you me. You have deceived me. And I was deceived. I was deceived because when God gave that promise. <laughs> that is where he was deceived. But God does not deceive. He did not hear it or, or read that prophecy along the lines. When he said, I will be there to deliver you, does not mean that you will not be in affliction. Yes. For the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. Mm -hmm. Out of them all, the Lord will deliver them. Mm -hmm. Ah, Lord help us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. 
Thou art stronger than I. Thou is saying you are stronger than I. <laughs> you have prevailed. He acknowledges that no matter what, you have won this game, a battle. I cannot fight it. I am in derision daily. I have become in a state of mockery. Everyone mocked me. Everyone is mocking at me because I am not the popular guy. <laughs> I am not the one who expands, who says you will be blessed, who says open doors. I only see it as it comes and I say it. But I become an enemy because I prevent people from falling into problems. Mm -hmm. Because if they hit the Jeremiah, they will not fall into their problems. Ah, yeah, Lord help us. <laughs> For since I speak, mm -hmm. I cried out. I got to a point in time I said I will not. I cried violence and spoil. Yes. Because the word of the Lord was made a reproach, a reproach unto me. Uh -huh. And a dairy son. Yeah. Daily. Daily. Then I said I will not make mention of him. I say I will not speak again about you. Nor speak any more in his name. Nor speak about your name. But his word was in my heart. But God placed that word in his heart. As a burning fire. As a burning fire. Shut up in my bones. Shut up in his bones. And I was weary with forbearing. He could not bear it anymore. And I could not stay. I could not hold it back. I, uh, Lord help us. <laughs> Lord help us not to forbear when you do not forbear. Not to grow weary when you do not grow weary. That we may speak your word even as you want us to speak it. I pray the Lord help his people to hear in Jesus' name. Amen. Like I used to say that everything that God has said about the last days, he has already said it will happen. All we need to do is to put ourselves in the mind and in the disposition that we should not fall into that trap. Pay attention. That's why I keep on saying pay attention. There comes a time I will not be here to speak. <laughs> but pay attention now that we are speaking consistently and make sure you put it in action. Hey, Lord, help us. The church is quiet. <laughs> help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalms 19 verse 4. We have to separate that which is vile from that which is precious. 19 verse 14, gather. It says, Let the words of my mouth, let the words of my mouth, and the meditation of my heart, and the meditation of my heart, be accepted in the sight, be acceptable in the sight. O Lord, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer, my strength, my redeemer. Let the words of my mouth separate that which is vile and the meditation of my heart. What I'm thinking should be acceptable in your sight. What I am meditating about situations, circumstances, others, let me put the vile and let me put the precious so that it will be acceptable. And when it is acceptable, that word will have what? Power. It will have power, power, power to deliver. I pray we get there in Jesus' name. Amen. That is why, again, he goes on, the scripture goes on further to tell us when we come to the place of prayer in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 18. It says this. I would therefore... That 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8, sorry. Timothy chapter 2, verse 8. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8. Yeah. I will... Therefore, that men pray everywhere. I am advising you that everyone should pray everywhere. Lifting up holy hands. Lifting up holy hands. Without wrath or doubting. When you want to pray, most of the time we don't lift up our hands. But lifting up hands is a, is a sign of surrender. It is a spiritual symbolic sign which is important in prayer and worship. When you come to the presence, take a few minutes to lift up your hands in heaven and adore the King of Kings for a moment. Amen. It is very important. But he said when you lift up holy hands, 
You should not be in anger. And you should not doubt. Because that prayer will not be answered. It means that is the vile thing in your prayer. That is the unclean thing in your prayer. Without that and doubting. Without wrath and doubting, without bitterness, without anger, and don't doubt, because if you doubt, no answer. <laughs> it's principle. No magic can we not do after that. Are you with me? I cannot change what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> If you don't follow the protocol, there is no shortcut to the answer. You must be in that disposition for it to happen. Scripture also says he that comes to the mountain of God must have a pure heart and clean hands. Are you with me? For God to arise over our kiss in Jesus' name. The third thing why God divides is to help us to see God. God divides things in our life so that we can see him also. Isaiah 6 verse 1. Isaiah 6 verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Wonderful. In the day that someone died, King Uzziah died, that was when Isaiah entered a new dimension with God. But take note, he was a prophet. He had been prophesying from chapter 1 to 5. <laughs> While Uzziah was still there, <laughs> Isaiah was prophesying but was not seeing God. <laughs> But the day Uzziah died, Uzziah was a hindrance for Isaiah seeing God. Now, what was happening? That's why I say we need to be his mouthpiece. Our mouth needs to be clean. Let's look verse 5 to 8. Still Isaiah 6. Then said I, Then I said, Woe is me. Woe is me. For I am undone. I am undone. Because I am a man of unclean lips. I am a man of unclean lips. And I do it in the midst of a people of unclean my lips. My mouth is not in order. <laughs> for mine eyes have seen the king. My eyes have seen the king. You the see, Lord of hosts. There is a problem. I am a man of unclean lips. Not because I actually intended. But because I dwell among a people of unclean lips. Aya. Aya, 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 You didn't hear what I said. <laughs> it is the people that have made me to change my prophetic ministry. <laughs> I, oh, 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 Lord, help us. Because they are unclean, I became a unclean in my mouth. Because I wanted them to hear what they wanted to hear. Not what God wanted them to hear. I am feeling fire. <laughs> help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. <laughs> now, God says, okay, I, I have heard your, your cry. You have repented. Let's then, do it all over. Six, then flew one of the seraphims unto me. One of me. the seraphims flew now. Having, having a live coal in his hand. Having a live coal. You know coal, right? Mm. What we used yesterday in grilling. <laughs> in roasting. Mm. That is coal. A live one. It means it was still hot with the fire on it. Spiritually. That is what he's saying. Which he had taken with the tongues from the he altar. He took it. From off the altar. With, you know those iron, the tongue is like a fork. You, you can hold things. He picked it from the altar of God. <laughs> because that coal, he cannot hold it even with his hand. But see what is happening spiritually. Symbolically, God is showing what is going to happen to Isaiah. Yeah? And he laid it upon my mouth. He laid it upon his mouth. 
and said, Lo, upon his tongue now, he said, Lo, these had touched thy lips. It has touched your lips. And thy iniquity is taken away. Your iniquity is now taken away. And thy sin purged. And your sin has been taken away. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord now, say. Yes, the voice of the Lord say. Whom shall I send? Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And who will go for us? Then said I. Then I said, I, I, I said. Here am I. Here am I, Lord. Send me. I Isaiah was to be sent again <laughs> because the people of unclean lips had made Isaiah to be disqualified, but still in his office. Ah, yeah. <laughs> that is why God began to say again, Whom shall I send? Because I want you to be my mouth. Not what you want the people to hear, but what I want them to hear is what you need to say. I want you to be my mouth. Whom shall I send? Isaiah cried again, Lord, send me. And God sent him again. So God wants us to be his mouthpiece. Therefore, I want to pray. Every principality that stands as Uzziah in every nation that may be blocking the mouth of God, may it be destroyed by the Holy Ghost fire. Amen. May it be destroyed by the Holy Ghost fire. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. May those coals of fire begin to fall on the tongues of people. Amen. The same coal of fire that was pick, picked up from the altar. May God begin to deposit it on the tongues of men and women. Amen. Men and women in the body of Christ. Amen. That will arise for the word of God. Amen. That will arise for the truth of God's words. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 The fourth thing when God divides is when God has called you for his work. Acts of the Apostle 13, verse 1 to 2. You can be in the midst of the people, but God, when he calls you, he takes you out of the people. That is what he did for Moses. He called Moses. From the people chose he a prophet. He separated Moses to himself. Now, now, Acts 13, verse 1 to 2. They were in the church that was at Antwerp, Antioch. In the church called Antioch. Certain prophets and teachers. We remember it is Antioch that their believers were first called Christians mm. because of their Christ like nature. And what the, what was the reason why they were called Christians? Because in the church, there was the prophetic and the teaching. Mm -hmm. ay, 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 ay. Hey, I lost you again. Are you with me? In that church, there was the prophets and teachers. The prophetic is also a teacher. Oh, oh, oh. That's why they can dwell together. Because they understand themselves. <laughs> but not just any kind of teacher deep revelational insight for practical practice and development of the Christian life so there were teachers as for example as Barnabas and Simeon Simeon that was called Niger that was called Niger and Lucius of Syrian Lucius of Syrian and Manan and Manan which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrach uh -huh. and Saul. And Saul. As they ministered to the Lord as and fasted. Listen to that. As they ministered to the Lord. Do you hear what I said? Are you getting what is being said? As they ministered to the Lord. To the Lord. To the Lord. Do you know why I'm insisting that? As they ministered to the Lord. Because many times we minister to ourselves, not to the Lord. Worship is to the Lord. <laughs> but when you are singing to the Lord <laughs> or to yourself, it is different from when you are ministering to the Lord. Amen. When you are ministering to the Lord, He is the center. There's nothing about you. I praise you, Lord. I bless you, Lord. I magnify you, Lord. But when you are ministering to yourself, you can be singing. 
He has blessed my life. He has brought on my bread. He has sugared my tea. <laughs> that is ministering to yourself. Because you are talking to self. But when you are ministering to the Lord, there is nothing about you there. Lord, we give you glory. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we magnify you. It is only you that is worthy of our praise. It is only you that is worthy of our glory. But when it is self, oh Lord, you help me. I fought my enemies and I won. Everyone who fought me, they died. Everyone who came my way, they could not touch me. See how you have blessed me now. Oh, my life is ginger. <laughs> and we are dancing. It's good. But also, make sure your ministering to the Lord is more than ministering to encourage yourself. Amen. Those songs are good to encourage ourselves sometimes. But it should not be the center. We should not only focus on that all the time. It should not be the kind of song that you say, I like. Are you hearing me? The one that you should like more is the one that ministers to the Lord. The one that is saying things that glorify God. So when you are listening to worship, spend time in that, those kind of songs. When you are listening to praise, spend time in those kind of songs. The other ones, you can play them as well. They are good. They are also part of the bundle. One needs another. But you should have the revelation of what worship is truly is. It is only when you minister unto the Lord that he speaks to you. Yeah, that is why people do not hear God. Mm. <laughs> they wonder, why do I not hear him? Because you, you are talking to yourself. Who should, you are in a monologue. Keep on speaking to yourself. So God does not enter in such discussions. Mm. But when you are praising, he inhabits the praises of his people. Oh. That is unto him. Then you will hear his voice. My son, my daughter. This is the way. Walk there in it. You will hear his voice giving you guidance. You will hear his voice speaking to you. And as the did that, the Holy Ghost now said, Say, pray me. Soon. And as they ministered to the Lord and mm -hmm. fasted, yeah. the Holy Ghost said separate me said separate me Barnabas and Saul mm -hmm. for the work where unto I have called them. where unto I have called them. so the next thing God divides is to separate you for his work that is why when he calls you he will want to form you a vessel to be meant and fit for his use Amen. the master's use so that you will not be a vessel of silver, a vessel of wood. Because in the house of God, whether we like it or not, scripture already said there are those kind of vessels. But you must choose to be a vessel of gold. A vessel of honor unto the Lord. It is those that have not entered into what God did not call them. <laughs> like I said, you don't force yourself there. But he called you. As the Bible says, no man takes this honor to himself. And when he gives you a particular task, be faithful in it. Because he will always start in the little. None of us here, like I, an example, I never started on the pulpit. He will start you in the field like he did for David. He will be training you with the lions and the bears. For the Goliath you will meet in the future. But if you don't learn the back side, you will not be able to learn the front side. That is why during those days, you still have to be faithful as if that is all you have. Ayah. The key is faithfulness. God looks for faithfulness because God does not, it's not the kind of God that gives you things that you play around with. He does not do that. As I told us, God is a, an investor. An investor who wants to make profit in our lives. So he looks for faithfulness in that investment. If you are not faithful, he does not invest more. <laughs> yeah. 
Ah, uh, you didn't get that. <laughs> if you are not faithful, he does not invest more. Just like a businessman. If a businessman does not see profit, he does not invest more. And you ask yourself, why am I not having passion? Why is my passion dying? Because your passion is dying because you are not being faithful in the small. <laughs> you are not putting yourself together to work that little. Put more strength on that little. Develop it, skill it more. Make it work better and better. Because I tell you the truth, no one is good at what they are doing by sleeping and get up. It takes a lot of work. It is a divine and kingdom principle. God says, study to show yourself approved. Not to men, to God. Yes. Yes. It is him that will mark the cards and the reports. Not men. <laughs> men can consider you faithful, but God cannot consider. It is him that you study to, to show yourself approved. So that, what is the aim? You should rightly divide. Amen. <laughs> Even the word is a subject of division. <laughs> so you should rightly divide that word. If not, you can also wrongly divide it. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you. The next thing is healed in Jesus' name. <laughs> he's healed in Jesus' name. He's not sick. <laughs> so don't bother. He's fine. In the midst of all this, God does not want division among his children. No matter all this division we has put. What he has put together not to be divided, he does not want it to divide. So in the midst of all this, he does not want division among his children. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10. Let's look at it. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10. Now I beseech you, mm -hmm. brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I am be beseech is the strong word for pleading, begging. I am begging you by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That ye all speak the same thing. That you people should speak the same thing. And that there be no divisions and among you. And that there is no division among you people. But that ye be perfectly joined together. You be perfectly joined together. In the same mind and in the same judgment. In the same mind and in the same judgment. That you may be perfectly joined together. You may have the same mind. Because if you don't have the same mind, there will be divisions. <laughs> You may have the same mind and the same judgment about things. Are you with me? So, that is what God wants to be among us as believers. And if that is the case, then we are ready to cross the Red Sea. Not so. Because they came out of Egypt together to cross the Red Sea. The Red Sea, in this case, signifies the different problems you and I are facing. Moses is standing before the Red Sea in Exodus chapter 14, verse 14 to 15. And he is calling upon God. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. 14 to 15, yeah. And the Lord... Can you add us more? Thank you. And the Lord said unto Moses, yeah. Wherefore Christ thou unto me? Why are you crying unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel. Speak unto the children of Israel that they should do what? That they should go forward. That they should go forward. Lift up thou up thy rod. Uh -huh. lift, but lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea. Uh -huh. What and, will happen? And divide it. And you will divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Okay, thank you. Wait a minute. Let's look at something. There, before the Red Sea, Moses is crying to God. God said, don't cry unto me. Because what you are crying, I already gave it in your hands. <laughs> Tell them to move forward. As they move forward, as your God is lifted also up, I will divide the Red Sea. Okay, now what do you think? Is the Red Sea divided? Think for example, I stand before you, we have heard the voice of the Lord. This, I, I say to you people, 
God has said we should move. The door is open. I see three doors ahead of us. You look, look there. Are you seeing the doors? I say, the door is open ahead of us. I see three doors. The Lord has already divided. My hand is up. Three doors are open, not one. We can all move into it. Move. Move now into the door. What will you do? That's, I said there are three doors ahead of us. Move into the three doors, not that one. There are three doors here. Are you people? Are you people moving or not? You are sitting down. You are not moving. Okay. Should I rephrase it? There are doors ahead of you. Open doors. Or I say to you, I see. Let me make it. I don't want to make it too, too easy <laughs> for you to think. Now let me make it easy because you didn't get that one. Okay. I say to you, for example, I see you having a new fan. This fan is old. And this fan costs 50000 to buy a new one. Do you have it to buy the fan? Let's take, for example, you don't have it to buy the fan. But the word of God said, go and buy it. Because that's the word of God. What will you do? Go and buy it. How will you buy it? I'll go with what I have. I'm going faith. No, it's easily said that what you are saying. But if I give you an instruction, go and do something. Have you worked immediately on that thing? Or you have thought of how that thing will come to pass before you go? Let me tell you something, what I'm trying to bring out there. The Red Sea, when it lifted up its God, the Red Sea was not divided. <laughs> you didn't hear what I said? The Red Sea was very close. But what caused the Red Sea to be divided is when they moved ahead, as he said, go forward. As they moved, the Red Sea started dividing. If they had stood there and said, we don't see any Red Sea divide, divided yet. The waters are still close. Well, you are telling us to move where? Move where? where? Where is the movement? No Red Sea is before us open. <clears throat> How can we get what you are saying? It's not possible. They will stand there forever and Pharaoh will catch them. How do you know? <laughs> so what do you need to cause the Red Sea in our lives? What do we need? It's faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 29. That was what they needed. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things you don't see. By what now in Hebrews 11 29? By faith, they pass through the Red Sea. By faith, they pass through the Red Sea. As by dry land. As a dry land. Which the Egyptians. But the Egyptians do not walk by faith. Mm. So what happened to them? As saying to do were drowned. They drowned. <laughs> Let's end there for today. <laughs> God's word. <laughs> The drown. Let, if you've not known Jesus, all oh, what we are saying is not your portion. But if you if you want to be with us on the same platform, we want you to say this simple prayer. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. I believe that you died on the cross. For my sin. The third day you rose again. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Lord, wash me with your precious blood. I pray and I receive your grace to walk with you. Let me be found faithful at your return. In Jesus' name. Amen. So that is faith. <laughs> you don't have to see it. It is not. The evidence of things hope for the evidence of things, the substance of things hope for the evidence of things not seen. Our first prayer point. We want to pray Acts of the Apostle 13, verse 1. We want to pray and say, Abba Father, Abba, Father. Divide. divide, separate me, separate me. 
separate my children, my family members from everything that needs to be divided in our lives, in Jesus. Empower it in the spirit and in your understanding. Separate me, divide me from everything that needs to be divided in our life. Separate me, divide me from everything that needs to be divided in our life. Separate me, divide me from everything that needs to be divided in our life. Our online viewers gave the right answer. They said, yes, by faith also, God bless you all. Le braco tala kashe ka bara da ko tala ka i braco sa bara ka de ko ko sa ka pale de i braco se ke talo da re ke to se ke bara da divide everything in our lives that needs to be divided divide everything that needs to be divided divide everything that needs to be divided in our lives divide everything that needs to be divided in our lives. Le bako ka barada do shoko barada. Li ga bo sheke bale ka barada ko dagala dada. Re ke balo do ko sheke bolote. Ga ga barada do ko shabala ka. In Jesus name we are praying. Now let's take the next prayer point. Judges chapter 5 verse 20 we know it. We want to pray for our star and say Abba Father every satanic force monitoring my star the star of my children the star of my family members brothers and sisters my spouse father every evil conspiracy may he not prosper I declare light upon our stars in the name of Jesus, power it in the spirit and in our your understanding. Leko bare deko shaga bare de. I bring you sabali kadaba. I bring you that I never get the benefit. I bring you sega bara da de de de. I bring you sega bara da do ko shaga bare de. I bring you that I never get the benefit. I bring you that I in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Our next prayer upon Jeremiah 29 verse 7. We want to pray and say, Abba Father, Abba Father we pray for your peace for your upon peace. the nations of the world. Let your hand, Let your hand push back Push back every hand of darkness. Every hand of darkness. We cover the nations cover with the, the blood of Jesus, Jesus and the fire of the Holy Spirit. Power, power in the spirit and in your understanding. Le brako da ba le keto. Le kabo se ke barata do shaka bala. Le brako si bala ka de ko ba le to to ko ba le ke barade do shaka bala. Le brako ti ka ti ka chali ka pali ti pili ti di di za bro de ki bwe. You said that the people are in Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Just take a piece of bread, viewers online, and the Jews where you are, and we move to our communion. The Bible said that same night he took the bread, he gave thanks, and said, this is my body. As often as you eat, you will eat in remembrance of me. As we partake of the communion tonight, Lord, that which was not permitted in your body is not permitted in us. May your May the mixture of the communion work for us tonight in Jesus' name. The word of God said, after that, he took the cup and sucked it and said, This is the cup of the New Testament. As often as we drink, we drink in remembrance of you. As Lord, we share of this tonight, we pray, Oh God, if the blood of the Lamb could cause the angel of death to pass over, how much more your blood? We pray that the same happen tonight in Jesus' name. As we partake of it, may the mystery of the communion work for us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, feel free to share of the communion. He 
has turned my life around. We give you all the praise, Lord. You have turned our life around. As we partake of your blood, we give you all the praise. You have turned our life around. As we partake of your body, we give you all the praise. As we partake of this bread and juice tonight, we believe it's working in our lives. We believe by faith. The Bible says the cross by faith. By faith also we believe. In the name of Jesus. Thank you all, viewers online and those in the auditorium for tuning in tonight. Our children's summer party was a blast. God was with us. Amen. God bless everyone who made it possible and who was there as well. So we are working towards our international ministers and church workers conference in the month of August. Let's continue to put it down in our prayers and share and share and share about it in Jesus' name. So we thank you viewers online for always sharing, putting a like there. The Lord will continue to increase your people as well in the name of Jesus. Amen. So let's just thank God tonight. Speak into your next week. Declare, declare the word of God. Say, decree a thing and it shall be established. Speak into next week. Declare blessings. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We give you praise. We give you glory. You have spoken, Lord. You have taught us again. Father, may he not escape from our lives. May he stay in our lives. Oh, Father, we bless you. We give you glory. We thank you, Father. We give you glory. We thank you, we thank you, Lord, we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Daniel's birthday is on Sunday next week, so everyone also is welcome to celebrate. Please try to prepare ahead of time so that we start on time on our schedule, so that we don't stay here for too long as well after that people will need to go by bus, maybe also able to go home early in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so that is the extra announcement I had for us. Shalom and God bless us all. Thank you for today. And I wish us all a blessed, blessed week ahead. by today's message. As we prepare to close for tonight, we want to encourage you to take a few minutes to leave a positive comment, a like and also to subscribe if you have been blessed by today's message. Please click the notification bell so you can get notified next when we are online. God bless you and we hope to see you again. Send testimonial to this email address and inquiries. blessed by today's message as we prepare to close for tonight we want to encourage you 
to take a few minutes to leave a positive comment, a like and also to subscribe if you have been blessed by today's message. Please click the notification bell so you can get notified next when we are online. God bless you and we hope to see you again. Send testimony.